Hello you beautiful legends and welcome to Blunt Force Healing Podcast. This is episode number 720 and albeit it's not the end of the day, uh, I decided to record or pre-record this episode a little bit out of order, breaking the convention that I did recently, but there's a reason for that. I think there's enough to unpack and connect the episode that I recorded this morning, or yeah, it was actually this morning, or around noon. So I'm supposed to record this particular episode tomorrow, but let me do it now and make it a continuation of shenanigans or the adventures, unpleasant adventures that happened yesterday and today. So it will be like a more of a connecting yesterday evening with today, except for the evening. <coughs> so just a quick uh, recall of what happened yesterday. Uh, those of you that know about this project, uh, you know that 720 days means that these are consecutive days, so every single day for 720 days I was vlogging and uh, recording podcast and there was no day off, so I'm kind of proud of making this uh, daily habit uh, without any hiccup, albeit it was very hard at times to maintain it because as we know we like to do some cheat days from every habit to some extent but I maintained 720 days without any cheat day which is bloody amazing I don't think I was able to do anything to that extent ever even the bad habits <laughs> meaning that probably if I have a long going bad habits I had probably day off by doing some good habit instead so yeah let me just turn because otherwise I won't be able to so again those of you that know the podcast and know the blog you, you are aware those of you that are new let me just uh, tell you that we started small business or enterprise and as you can see probably behind me those boards uh, are part of the big barrel sauna that is bolted to the trailer and what I do is I drive with that sauna to the beach people can book half an hour or full hour session or sometimes even a 15 minute session and they can heat themselves up then go to the ocean and enjoy both heat and cold and amazing views because while it's not visible here uh, kind of just above those boards the, the half of the sauna is the window so it's a huge panoramic window that is that allows for you know seeing the ocean and whatever is on the horizon while sitting at the beach in the sauna and heating yourself up. So I think it's an amazing experience. Uh, and yeah, that's what we offer. So most of the time we deploy the sauna in the evening for two, three hours. Uh, over the weekends, we try to do also the morning sessions. So today we did morning sessions and I am now going for the evening sessions. But I want to rewind uh, to yesterday because yesterday evening the high tide was coming and covering most of the beach. So I was standing at the at the road that leads to the to the beach, literally at the exit, 
not the first spot beside the ramp but a little bit further and we had no clients we had two bookings that uh, were later in the evening but yeah I was most of the time sitting there uh, at the ramp and when the first evening uh, with first booking was a <laughs> apologies for the shaking but it's that treacherous and murderous part or segment of the road that I really hate because when I go with the sauna it really is felt because it's heavier than the car so it kind of jerks uh, the car here and there but yeah yesterday I stayed at the ramp for most of the time and when the first booking was about to start I knew that it is about 15 to 20 minutes until high tide. I knew that uh, it won't cover the whole beach, so there was a strip of sand that I could drive onto. Uh, so I decided to go for the sunset and drive onto the beach, which turned out to be not the best decision because as I stopped and then wanted to move a little bit further, I realized that the sand that I drove onto wasn't as hard as I was expecting so I didn't drive on the soft sand that I know for a fact that will be dangerous but this this type of sand I was driving a lot of times but there are moments when sand becomes a pain and it was that moment where I couldn't drive off so because I knew that the, the main reason is that I have a heavy sauna behind me I detached it I allowed people to get in and I drove off with just a car so I was able to pull it uh, pull the car away from those little kind of uh, holes that I dug uh, shallow holes with, with in the sand that I did, did with the wheels and I drove off for about three four meters away from the sauna I started kind of taking bookings and getting people in and, and making sure that everything works for them and then I started thinking how will I get the sauna off uh, because obviously I knew that at some stage uh, in the evening when even when the tide will subside I will have to drive back to the same spot and it's already you know impossible to to move the sauna from that very loose sand and those little kind of pits that I did so I thought about approaching it a little bit from the slight angle and then jerk it a little bit forward on the harder well it's, it will be the same sand but at least not not uh, moved yet so it's a little bit beaten up so much harder than than the rest of the sand and I used the trick with the floor mats to put under the wheels to get the grip but when I approached the sauna it was already dark it was very difficult to position the car and I didn't want to drive too much in that place to get the sand as hard as possible and I knew that I have only one try so I positioned my car and as I was latching the, the sauna trailer to the to the tow bar, the moment I touched the tow bar, I saw the sparks, and that already frightened me a bit. I pulled it back, and I was the, I, I checked the cables and everything, and the plug that everything is fine. I did it once again, and this time sparks went in and also <laughs> all lights went out <laughs> so I knew something wrong happened I was like short circuit between the trailer and the car and I didn't know why or what was causing it and I was now without lights and well the car was fine but the trailer was without lights and I had to drive off the dark beach and then drive 17 kilometers so about 10 miles 
home uh, with the sauna in the dark so I needed to sort things out so I first decided to keep it latched and try to first get off the beach and sort the lights later or worry about lights later and it was one try it was very hard I felt like the car almost dug itself up uh, in the sand but I somehow managed to pull it off and when I pulled it off I went straight as long as I had the grip I decided to get out of the beach get back on the ramp where the road is so I knew that it will be uh, safe and then to check the lights and once I did it I took the floor mats from from the beach it was already dark it was very difficult to uh, you know find them but I found them they were all in dirty from the from the sand wet sand uh, but yeah I didn't care they helped me to get the grip and get out of the sand I saw the deep kind of uh, pits that I did with my wheels but the most important thing was that I got off and now I could worry about the lights and it turned out that the hazard lights were, uh, were working indicators as well because it's the same light and also one brake light was working fine but one other brake light and the side lights weren't which is dangerous to drive with uh, especially that the sauna is wider than the trailer so I need to be I needed to be careful so what I did is I was driving with hazard lights when there was traffic when there was no traffic I was dri driving normally and then when there was too much traffic I was kind of pulling over to the hard shoulder and let people pass and managed to arrive safely and now we are coming to today <coughs> apologies today I was wondering how will I figure how will I do it so we drop Julian uh, at school uh, we attached the sauna and came to the beach with the sauna I was because it, it's a beautiful day and a very bright day I wasn't that much uh, worried about lights uh, I was very visible uh, of course I needed to make sure that I'm not breaking suddenly and I slow down every time uh, I need to, uh, you know, stop so people have enough time to adjust their speed and that was fine and I was using hard shoulder to let people pass as well. So we arrived there and we had a couple of customers, it was great, until I realized that I have literally the bottom of the reserve in my uh, fuel tank and I was so I was so preoccupied with those issues uh, across the morning and serving customers that I didn't realize that I have only 30 kilometers left so about I don't know what it is 10 20 miles of the range and it was showing basically that I'm at the zero level of diesel so I rang my wife she was on the walk and I said I will leave the sauna open uh, I left her towel and stuff beside it and decided to go and drive to the nearest gas station which was about 13 kilometers away so I was keeping fingers crossed that I will arrive on time and uh, when I arrived 
uh, I I was happy. It was probably I had about 15 kilometers left, so just just the right uh, moment to get there and get the full tank of fuel. Came back, we packed the sauna, and drove back home. And I was still wondering what can I do with the trailer, and I drove to the nearby mechanic and asked him. I told him what the situation is, how it happened, and he said that it will be, it won't be efficient to investigate the and find the fault. It will be more expensive because it probably will take hours, and if he's cha charging by hour, then it's obviously it will cost me a lot. And he said that it's better to just rewire all the trailer and do the whole thing again. And obviously that wasn't cheap either. He said that it will be about 450 to 500 euros. Which you can imagine is quite expensive for a theoretically small fault like that. And because I'm not an electrician, I can't check it for myself and, and sort it out. I was a little bit concerned. But I was ready to also you know, pay for it to get that off my chest. But it still sat with me, it's 450 euro. My wife didn't want to pay that. And then I spoke to a neighbor and he said like, listen, you can probably fix it yourself or do some alternative way to, to make it legal and safe without spending so much money. He gave me a couple of suggestions. So I drove to the uh, motor parts store and garage and I spoke to the guys and turned out that they have a set of magnetic kind of lights and uh, there was full set of the brake lights and the indicator lights so we just put them on the trailer with the strong neo dimium uh, magnets and there is a long 10 meters lead same as mine to plug it in so I plugged it in, it was probably 45 euros, so a ten tenth of the price of rewiring. And I was happy as a clam. I went for some groceries, I came back, I rewired that, uh, I just put the new lights, they worked fine. So I got ready and as I drove off and approached the, the first turn, to the main road I was surprised that I'm not hearing like a beeping sound uh, from the back of my car because there's a, like a little boozer or something that is uh, indicating that when I turn indicators or something like that they beep meaning that there's connection between the trailer lights and the car and I thought maybe it's too noisy, but it wasn't noisy, so I was really concerned. I stopped the car, I came out, and I realized that the plug slid off and it broke. So I was, I was so pissed off that it happened because, you know, I just bought the thing and it broke because I probably didn't plug it fully in and it kind of was new, shiny thing probably slid off and was kind of banging against the the road and whatever. So I was already hopeless, but then I realized that it's only like the casing or the, the plug that is broken, the insides, like the pins, everything is fine. So what I did is I still had the bad one and it's the same casing and it's just a little latch that you open it, unscrew it and la la open the latch. So I came out with the idea just to replace them the good one from the bad plug to the instead of bad one in the good plug and after a while on the side of the road I was able to do it connected it it works fine I'm here at Rosnala and I will be updating you a little bit more about it uh, in the next episode but for now that's it thank you very much for tuning in 
Have a great rest of the day, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Stay tuned and see you again tomorrow.